The 007 franchise, based off a series of novels by Ian Fleming, has been adapted into several forms of transmedia. The most popular are the 22, soon to be 23, films produced by Eon Productions. Across 50 years of Bond, the franchise has used similar devices to ensnare audiences, bringing them into the world of espionage time and time again. In this screencast, we'll be analysing the franchise to see why it's had such enduring success across the long period of time since its inception. As Seth mentioned, that for a transmedia franchise to be successful, it has to be high concept, contain iconic characters, and have a rich, interesting world. We'll be exploring the James Bond universe to see whether the series contains these elements as being essential to creating a successful transmedia franchise. The opening to all Bond films, with a few exceptions, introduces the famous gun barrel sequence. This sequence establishes character and genre for audiences, but most importantly, makes it iconic for the franchise. When audiences see the gun barrel sequence, they immediately know what they're in for. The films always have a cold opening to jump into the action immediately to whet the audience's appetite. These sequences are often action-packed, quirky and irrelevant to the overall main plot. The title of the sequence follows this, which uses contemporary music of its time. This gives the films more appeal to wider audiences, exposure to the artists and updates each film into the present. As such, the soundtracks and singles released in unison with each film help sell the franchise in marketing and sales. Bond has become a likeable character to our audiences, and one many males can aspire to be, such as an icon or idol. His mannerisms and one-liners have become infamous across his many adventures and incarnations. I think you got the point. Uh, just a drink. A martini. Shaken, not stirred. And for you? His most famous of all is his immortal introduction that has lived on from the franchise's roots. My name is Bond. 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 James Bond. Bond. James Bond. A phrase that conveys his sophistication and charm and has expanded into pop culture. Other iconic features of Bond's character are his tuxedo, gadgets and vodka martinis, making Bond easily distinguishable from other characters in not only the universe of Bond, but also franchises of its genre. Despite multiple actors playing the role of Bond, each brings their own unique spin on the character, yet still retains the charm, humour and charisma, staying true to the character of Bond. Many of these traits are aspirational to men and desirable to women, appealing to a larger audience and increasing the success of the franchise. The Cold War era of the novels are easily adaptable into the medium of film. Ian Productions first adapted Dr. No despite being the sixth novel in the series. The justification behind this being it was the most adaptable due to budget restrictions. However, the episodic nature of the films, most of which follow simple, formulaic plots, allow audiences to easily jump in at any point, without prior knowledge of previous instalments. This shows Bond is a high concept, as the plots of each are typical and easily summarised. The Bond film series is split into two main sections. Classic Bond, starting with 1962's Doctor No, leading to Licence to Kill in 1989. After a six-year hiatus, the series returned with Goldeneye and was later rebooted in 2006 with Casino Royale. Despite being revived into a grittier and darker world, the series still retains many features that originally made the franchise successful. The format is high concept and was transferable into a different take on the franchise. The rebooted series, starring Daniel Craig, borrowed several elements from rival franchises, such as the Jason Bourne series, that rose due to popularity of Bond. After the second hiatus following Dying of the Day, the Bond franchise filled the void of spy espionage but in a darker, more realistic world. When Bond returned in Casino Royale, he used some of the concepts merged with its own originality in order to cater to new audiences 
had grown accustomed to more chaotic, fast-paced set pieces. The action-packed espionage theme of Bond has been converted into the video game format to great success. The most notable GoldenEye, based on the 1995 film of the same name, helped define the first-person genre. Such was the popularity, the game was later remade in 2011, but in the style of the more recent Daniel Craig version of the James Bond universe. Bond has also embarked on completely original adventures in the video game format, such as Nightfire and Everything or Nothing, due to the simple action-based nature of the films that can be emphasised and adapted into video game format. Villains in the Bond franchise form a large part of the universe due to their memorable appearances and attributes. For example, Scaramanga's Golden Gun, as well as Blofeld's White Cat and Scarred Face, these larger-than-life characters often have obscure skills and are very intimidating, which capture audiences' imagination and help gather fan bases due to being extraordinary. Gadgets are an integral part of the world of James Bond, which are often fantastical and futuristic. This fantasy element to the world helps Bond get out of sticky situations and defeat the villain. More importantly, it provides escapism in contrast to the real-world spies, and therefore makes certain scenarios more exciting for the audience. Stereotypically, the villain's plan for world domination or goals of such nature. Bond is often portrayed as the hero in which he always saves the princess towards the end, affectionately referred to as Bond Girls. The story structure and familiar archetypes have been tried and tested as implied by props theory. Audiences are familiar with these traits and have proved to be as successful across the course of time. The role of Bond girls has changed substantially throughout the years. At Bond's inception, women are often seen as objects of desire and as damsels in distress. Throughout the years, women in the franchise have shifted so that even they can have the upper hand against Bond. Mayday and more recently Vesper are two to name but few. This shift helps to keep the franchise fresh rather than Bond saving the girl over and over again. It introduces more strong-willed equal women whilst retaining the sex appeal which brings in the male audience. Pussy. To summarise, the Bond franchise has garnered success by beginning with a high concept that is easily adaptable into multiple formats due to the action-based nature of the series. Iconic elements are quickly established in the films, such as the theme song, gun barrel and catchphrases which make it more recognisable and appealing to viewers. Bond has taken multiple forms, yet has become internationally known by creating an exhilarating world that the audience want to escape and be immersed within. And with the franchise this year celebrating its 50th anniversary, it is fair to say the franchise is still alive and well.